Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 25th of the seventh month in the midst of tabernacles for us on this calendar that we're keeping, according to what's written in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the book of Hanok and Yobelim and elsewhere. And it is also the 1st of October on the Gregorian calendar for those keeping track of that. And today we had a little segue. We're going to be covering prayer and different prayers for first Louis in his testament, what we have in the Dead Sea Scrolls from that. And then we are going to look at the prayers for the righteous or the, the fellowships in the apostolic constitutions, generally what a body of believers would do amongst themselves. So right here, this is the testament of Louis, the third son of Yaakov and Leah. This is the copy of the words of Louis, the things which he ordained unto his sons according to all that they should do, and what things should befall them until the day of judgment. He was born in health when he called them, or he was sound in health, rather, when he called them to him. For it had been revealed to him that he should die. And Yahuwah lets his servants know the truth and the future. This same thing, being in health and being knowing that you're going to die, was what his uh, for his the matriarch Rebecca or Ribka had experienced when Yaakov laughed and said, "Let me be in as good a health of you when it's my time, and come near to your age," was which is exactly what happened to him. But <clears throat> to continue, and when they were gathered together, he said to them, I, Louis, which is literally unto me, or joined, if you will, unto me. I, Louis, was born in Haran, and I came with my father to Shechem. And I was young, about 20 years of age, when with Shimon, I wrought vengeance on Hamor for our sister Dina. And when I was feeding the flocks at Abu Mal, a ruach of comprehension of Yahuwah came upon me, and I saw all men corrupting their way, and that unrighteousness had built for itself walls, and lawlessness sat upon towers. And I was grieving for the race of the sons of men, and I prayed to Yahuwah that I might be delivered. Right. And then it says, Then I there fell upon me asleep, and I beheld a high mountain, and I wait, was and I was upon it, right? But I want to show you right here. This one sentence is an abridgment of what was actually written. Just and I prayed. In reality, there was the whole prayer that was written. And that kind of phenomenon is tragically something you can see throughout a lot of parts of scripture. Even in the common scriptures, you go, and this is something that we'll go over in detail when we go through Exodus specifically, you're going to see that they, for whatever reason, there was a lot of redundancy just removed. And um, things they might think are superfluous or for whatever reason, perhaps the prayer wasn't preserved correctly. And this was the only way they could really just paraphrase it. I can't say how it came down or came to be this way exactly for this particular version that we have, but Ab gratefully was uh, made known to us the Dead Sea Scrolls in which we have a preserved copy of what the prayer was like. So if you have the Dead Sea Scrolls, a new translation, this is going to be on page 305 or starting on page 304, 305. And for anyone that wants to know, there's Giz Kinesia fragments and also Mount Athos Greek text as well, which is probably what this version is. And then you have the, the Geniza fragments would be the fragments that were found in Egypt. And those also go along with the scrolls here, which I'm just going to read for you. 4Q213, 4Q213A and B, 4Q214. 4Q214A and B, 4Q540 
and 541, 1Q21. All of those are individual scrolls or fragments that all have this text on it or the text relating to the Testament of Louis, okay? But right here, I, I want to uh, uh, start from the beginning of column one, and you're going to see what he actually did before he prayed and then the prayer itself. It says, Then I washed my clothing and purified them with clean water, and I bathed all over in fresh water. So first he washed his garments or purified his actions, right? And then he immersed himself. So making all my ways correct. Then I raised my eyes and face to Shemaim. I opened my mouth and spoke. And my fingers and hands I spread out properly in front of the set-apart messengers. So I prayed and said, Yahuwah, you know all hearts. All the thoughts of the mind you alone comprehend. Now my brother's sons are with me. Or it says my brothers and then another manuscript adds sons. But now my brothers are with me. Remember, he was 19 at the time. <clears throat> so entrust to me the right ways. Remove from me, Yahuwah, the immoral Ruach. Rid me of wicked thoughts and unchastity. Reveal to me, Yahuwah, the Kodesh Ruach, counsel and chokmah, or wisdom, and knowledge and strength. Grant me so that I can do what pleases you and find favor with you, praising your words with me. Yahuwah, doing what is proper and right in your eyes. Let no demonic adversary have power over me, making me wander from your path. Have mercy on me, Yahuwah, and draw me near to be your servant and to worship you properly. May your wall of shalom be around me. May the shelter of your might protect me from all harm. Purify my heart, Yahuwah, from all impurity, that I myself may be lifted up to you. Do not hide your face from the son of your servant, Yaakov. You, Yahuwah, have Baruch my great-grandfather Abraham and my great-grandmother Sarah, and commanded that they be granted righteous descendants forever Baruch, or blessed. So hear also the prayer of your servant Louis, that he may draw near to you. Let me share your word so as to render proper judgment forever. Yes, my sons and I, for all generations. So do not reject your servant's sons from your presence for all eternity. And I began to pray silently. All right. <clears throat> now that we have that prayer, let's continue. It says, <clears throat> Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain, and I was upon it, and behold, the Shemaim were opened. And a messenger of Elohim said to me, Louis, enter. And now this particular version of the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs is a study edition, or it's a critical edition, which went over different manuscripts and their differences. And that's why you see a lot of footnotes. And sometimes they'll have all three versions written. You can take the time to read them through, pause and check it out yourself. We're just going to go with one particular version. For continuity's sake, and I want to get to the point of what he was shown in response to his prayer, because of the importance is what you ask for will be given to you, and you can go back to the beginning. This is what our Mashiach said when he came in the flesh, and you can go back to Genesis and find that this is true all the way through. Abraham prayed for Yahuwah Elohim to be his sovereign ruler or his Elohim for him and his seed forever, and he was given the very thing that he asked for because he asked in belief. Louis just made that prayer, and then this is what happens for him. And I entered from the first Shemaim into the second, and I saw there a sea hanging between the one and the other. And further, I saw a third Shemaim far brighter and more brilliant than these two. 
for there was also a boundless light or a boundless height therein. And I said unto the messenger, Wherefore is it so? And the messenger said unto me, Marvel not at these, for you shall see four other Shemaim more brilliant and incomparable. For a total of seven, which is also mentioned in the ascension of Yeshiyahu and Irenaeus' against heresies. It might be mentioned in other places as well. I'll give you one more. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, in what's called the Songs of the Sabbath Sacrifices, <clears throat> which are the songs that were sung by the Kohanim and the Luiim when they were doing their offerings, they... Sorry, they had um, they talk about it in their songs about having multiple Shemaim up to seven, and their seven chief messengers, seven Hikel, seven Kohanim services of messengers serving in their in their Hikels in those firmaments. So it's rather or in those Shemaim rather, it's very interesting, and it's not something that uh, is overtly prevalent anywhere else in scripture but the luiim know about it it's mostly mentioned in these writings that are for them <clears throat> and as you see they're they're made like the messengers to to bring his truth to the people right those that draw near unto him but it says and i said unto the messenger wherefore is it so and he said unto me marvel not for you shall see four other shamayim more brilliant and incomparable and when you have ascended there, you shall stand near Yahuwah. And that was just like what Hanok experienced, although you don't go through all of it in detail with the account that we have now. And shall be his minister, and his mystery shall you declare to men, and shall proclaim concerning the redemption of Yisrael. And by you and Yahuda shall Yahuwah appear among men, saving or delivering every race of men. Right? And that's why it was extended to the nations, as you can see, right? And from Yahuwah's portion shall be your life, and he shall be your field and vineyard, and fruits, gold, and silver. If you're not familiar, the, the promise is in the book of Yobelim, and here that our Mashiach would come through Yahuda predominantly, but also through Louis. It was from these two that he would appear. And in, in the Basora, in the Good News accounts, you can see that the daughter of Dawid, the in, of the royal line, was Miriam, who had our Mashiach, and her cousin was Elisheba, who was of the, of the daughters of Aaron, Aharon, and married to Kohen. So they were related, and our Mashiach literally came from those two, as it was written. You also see throughout, like the ancient history of Caldonia, the son of MacDonald of the royal line of Yahuda intermarried with the Kohen, or the son of MacLaurin, or the daughter of MacLaurin, and then vice versa. The son of MacLaurin married the MacDonald's daughter, and you see Louis and Yahuda intermarrying. That also happened throughout um, throughout the time in antiquity as well. But that's a, another story for another time. So it says, And from y'all who is portion, this is what the Kohen gets, shall be your life, and he shall be your field and vineyard, and fruits, gold, and silver. Here, therefore, regarding the seven Shamayim, the lowest is for this cause gloomier, since it beholds the unrighteous deeds of men. The second has fire, snow, ice ready for the day of the ordinance of Yahuwah in the righteous judgment of Elohim. In it are all the Ruach Oath of the retributions for vengeance on the lawless. In the third, and this is the part of the Shamayim or the host of those messengers and all these things were waiting for judgment were standing ready and then 
they uh they got ready to go and Hanok was like awed and terrified at the moment when it happened in his vision. This is in the third are this is the one right in the third are the hosts of the armies which are ordained for the day of judgment to work vengeance on the spirits of deceit and belier or belial in Hebrew which is literally without worth or worthlessness and that's a title for Satan. So the Belier here in Belial, it's a title for the adversary or Satan. Just like Satan's a title that means adversary, Belial means worthlessness. And the children of Belial are the children of worthlessness or literally his, just like the children of light are our Mashiachs. Okay. And those in the fourth who are above these are Kadosh or set apart. For in the highest of all dwells the great esteem, in the Kadosh Kodeshim, far above all Kodeshah, or set-apartness. And in, in the Shemaim next to it are the messengers of the presence of Yahuwah, who minister and make intercession or propitiation to Yahuwah for all the sins of ignorance of the righteous. And they offer prayer to Yahuwah, a sweet-smelling savor, a reasonable and bloodless offering. The, the messengers of the presence, the Kadosh ones of the highest Shamayim, are the ones that make propitiation. And this is where it mentions in that we should let those of the prayers that, that know how to say them do so, right? And they offer to Yahuwah a sweet-smelling savor, a reasonable and bloodless offering. And in the Shemayim below, this might be the first mention of the prayers of righteous men being like an offering that's pleasant to our creator. Okay. You have some Psalms by Dawid that are written about that, but this is one of the earliest mentions. Although you see the example of it in scripture, Noah prayed, and was heard for his righteous behavior, right? It was acceptable to our creator because the offerings were an added thing, but it was the prayer, okay? These are the connections to it. You see the offerings in the prayer. Same thing with Abraham, the offerings in the prayer. These are what he desires to begin with. And in the Shemaim below are the messengers who bear the answers to the messengers of the presence of Yahuwah. And in the Shemaim next to this are thrones and dominions in which always praises are offered to Elohim. When therefore Yahuwah looks upon us, all of us are shaken, yea, the Shemaim and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of his majesty. But the sons of men, having no perception of these things, sin and provoke the Most High. Now, therefore, know that Yahuwah, or says, therefore, right? Know, therefore, that Yahuwah shall execute judgment upon the sons of men. Because when the rock or the rocks were being rent, and the sun quenched, and the waters dried up, and the fires cowering, and all creation troubled, and the invisible spirits melting away, and, she and Sheol, or Hades, the grave, takes spoils through the visitations of the Most High, men will be unbelieving and persist in their inequity. Oh, there is a right here. On this account with punishment shall they be judged. Therefore, the Most High has heard your prayer to separate you from inequity and that you should become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. The light of knowledge shall you light up in Yaakov. And remember, that's he who gets what's coming at the heel of what he's doing. 
And as the sun shall you be to all the seed of Yisrael, and there shall be given to you a baraka, and to all your seed, until Yahuwah shall visit all the nations in his tender mercies forever. And therefore there have been given to you counsel and comprehension, that you might instruct your sons concerning this, because they that barak him shall be baruch, and they that curse him shall perish. Now, before we move on, you can see what he asked for was given to him. He was brought up into the highest Shemayim to be drawn near to him, right? Uh, there, there's more. He was shown the kahuna. He, he, he's given the very things that he asked for. That's the point, All right? And right here, there's an amazing thing I just saw. I want to show you real quick, and we'll move on. I've, I've seen part of this before, but uh, some of it I hadn't. The rocks being rent and the sun quenched and the waters dried up and the fire cowering, all creation troubled, right? And the invisible spirits melting away and the grave taking spoils at the visitations of, of the Most High. This is when our Mashiach came. The sun was darkened. The rocks were rent with the earthquake. The waters dried up and also came the fire. Creation was not acting normally. And then the invisible Ruach, their spirits were being cast away. And judgment came across the people who didn't repent spoils were taken through the visitations of the most high which is also talked about in the dead sea scrolls in the the two ruach oath that rule over every man and what's going to happen in the time of his visitation who he visits the world through his word which is our mashiach but this also happened in, in a larger scale the sun being quenched was a phenomenon that literally happened in the dark ages. People don't know, but for 18 months, it, it didn't shine correctly. The waters drying up is a direct, direct judgment against the people for persecuting believers and keeping X mass. They had the uh, these super droughts that happened throughout Europe that you can see in the anti mashiach for dummies videos, literally the fire cowering, they literally burned people and then the fires went through. But at that time when they were persecuting believers like Polycarp, the fires wouldn't touch them. Even if it was burning, it wouldn't harm them or would literally avoid them. And some people had to be killed in a different way. Others that were burned didn't feel it or even some that did and suffered horrendously for very long times, patiently endured the suffering. And every one of them, all believers, all suffering for the true sake, martyrdom, each one of us get according to what we deserve. Some of them suffered, some of them didn't. And that's something that we all should think about. But <clears throat> these very things happened in a larger scale as well. If you recall... There is a push in the 1700s. Oh, I didn't mention that before. There's a gentleman who wrote a book called A Journey Through the Supernatural. I think his name's Robert Monroe. He's a French-Canadian, but he has a few videos. He became a Seventh-day Adventist eventually. I don't know if he's alive anymore. But at the time, um, he was into spirit worship, and he had been told by a spiritual or a, a priest a witch craft priest if you will about a coven plan they had in the 1700s where they wanted to get men to believe that spirits weren't real and that satan didn't exist that whole movement you you had this uh spiritual movement seances and other things that were very prevalent and all of a sudden whoosh, it all kind of went away it was very um low key for a while although now you can go into any major city and find fortune tellers and palm readers and other disgusting practices of witchcraft and abominable things and worse today including books for children and other stuff that and television shows quite sick things that i don't recommend anyone even get involved with all right so sorry about that but right here this, just like most other foretellings and everything in scripture, what has been will be again, what has been done will is done on a larger scale. But these things are cyclical. And uh, willing, you can see a little bit of that picture. This literally happened when our Mashiach walked the earth. And then it literally happened in a larger scale afterwards as judgments against the people for what they're doing to the truth. 
in the very same capacity. So just one moment and uh, we'll get to the other prayer section. All right, so we're back in the apostolic constitutions and going along the line with the theme for prayer, we wanted to cover a little bit more about what prayers were, these are samples. The apostolic constitutions were given by the 12 emissaries and Shaul when they came together and they all made these constitutions and it was published by Clement of Rome. He wrote them, he published them, and he handed them to the different assemblies throughout the world at that time, as, as well as with the Shepherd of Hermas, which you can read about in the account itself. It was given to Clement to publish them, in which they were spread throughout the assemblies and read there. But um, right here is an example of the prayer for the ordination of an overseer. And you can see, just like what Louis had, this was a prayer that was given for them and remember, he answers in the same way when you ask in belief. So it says, great, or you are great, or you are the great being, rather, you supreme ruler, Yahuwah El Shaddai, who alone are unbegotten and independent, who always are and was before the worlds, who needs nothing and are above all cause and beginning, who only are true, who only are wise, who only are most high, who are by nature invisible. And this is how we can know it's not speaking of our Mashiach, because not only is he he's begotten, but he's visible. He had a beginning, right? And he is not the one who has all knowledge. Because he said that there's even stuff that he doesn't know. That's why he proclaimed with unequivocal truth that the Father is greater. So the two are not, they are not one in any capacity other than what we are going to read later on. Just as we are to be one in our Mashiach, our Mashiach is one in his Father. Right? As a type and for us to, to emulate. <clears throat> This is who are by nature invisible, whose knowledge is without beginning, who only are good and incomparable, who knows all things before they are, who are acquainted with the most secret things, who are inaccessible. Our Mashiach is accessible, but the Father is, no one can see or know the Father, but the, our Mashiach alone, right? He dwells in light inaccessible, says by Shaul. And in Hanok, when he was brought in the Ruach before the father in the Shemaim, declared that no messenger can look upon him. And without a superior, the El and father of your only begotten son, of our El and deliverer, the creator of the world by him, the provider, the guardian, the father of mercies, the El of all consolation, who dwells in the highest Shemaim, and yet looks down on things below. You who did appoint the rules of the assembly by the coming of your Mashiach in the flesh, under the Comforter as witness, by your emissaries, and by us the overseers, who by your favor here are present, or are here present, who has foreordained overseers, from the beginning for the government of your people. Abel in the first place, Seth and Enosh, and Hanok, and Noach, and Melchizedek, and Job. Who did appoint Abraham and the rest of the patriarchs, with your trustworthy servants Moshe and Aharon, and Eleazar and Phinehas? You did choose from among them rulers in Kohanim, and in the tabernacle of your testimony. Sorry, rulers and Kohanim in the tabernacle of your testimony, who did choose Shemuel for a Kohan and a foreteller, who did not leave your sanctuary without ministers. And if you remember, all of these were from the sons of Louis. Okay. 
just like Louis prayed, it was given to him. Who did delight in those whom you chose to be esteemed in. Do you yourself, by the mediation of your Mashiach through us, pour down at this time the influence of your free Ruach, which is administered by your beloved son, Yahushua Mashiach, which he bestowed according to your will on the set-apart emissaries of you, the eternal El. Grant by your name, Elohim, who searches the hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen to be an overseer may feed your set-apart flock and discharge the office of a overseer to you. They keep putting high Kohen, but that was never that was never given. That position is our Mashiach. He is the high Kohen of our belief in the Melchizedek order. The comparable to the overseer here would be like a word they use for judges in the original covenant writings. And it's actually very similar to the word for, for visitation. The ones that were over the synagogues, if you will, were like the overseers of the bishops here. And they were supposed to teach people about how to be and prepare them for the time of his visitation, which is a, a related word. Very interesting. You can also see that when you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, the two ruach oath that rule over every man from the community rule. <clears throat> this is to continue here. You may flee or may feed your set apart flock and discharge the office of an overseer to you and minister to you unblameably, night and day, that he may appease you and gather together the number of those that shall be delivered and may offer to you the gifts of your set-apart assembly. Grant to him, Yahuwah Almighty, or Yahuwah Shaddai, that's the Father, through your Mashiach, the communion of the set-apart Ruach, so that he may have power to remit sins according to your command, to distribute offices according to your ordinance, to loose every bond according to the power which you gave to the emissaries. And again, the very thing that he enjoined for the emissaries to do, they give in the constitution to the ones that were given the position of overseer. And before, just for everyone's clarity, someone who's an overseer is unanimously chosen by the group with at least two or three times so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established and it's by con it's by consent of the governed that all things are according as they are. We've read through it in particular in the book of Acts and you see it in even more clarity and detail in the recognitions of Clement when Kef is going around preaching and building the assemblies as it goes. It says that he may please you in meekness and a pure heart steadfastly, unblamedly, irreproachably, while he offers to you a pure and unbloody sacrifice, which by your Mashiach you have appointed as the mystery of the new covenant for a sweet savor. Through your set-apart, it says child here, but your set-apart son, Yahushua Mashiach, our El and Deliverer, through whom esteem, honor, and worship be to you in the Kodesh Ruach now and always and for all ages. Now, if some people might have a hard time with the concept of how to relate who the Mashiach is in relation to our Father and how he can be called Elohim, all of those things are explained by his taught ones in various writings and ways. And you can also see it in the scriptures if you are studious and you take the time to study it. But to long story short, Kepha does the best explanation. And he mentions that Elohim is used in three ways, primarily. By the one who truly is, by those who are sent by him because he truly is and for the honor of him, they are given that title. And then you have the false mighty ones of the nations and others that attribute things that are not true. 
in the capacity of the one who truly is, that's the Father, in the capacity of those who are called so because they're sent by him, that was the example of our Mashiach, and also you have <clears throat> Moshe was sent to be like a Pharaoh, or like an Elohim to Pharaoh, and just as our Mashiach was like an Elohim over the people, he sent Moshe to be like an Elohim over right Pharaoh. It's a type and picture because our Mishiach says he only does what he sees and hears. He only says what he, what he hears and he does what he sees. And Kepha explains this again. This, as the Father is, so much so, as, as the Father exists, so much so that our Mishiach came to be, in the exact same way as the substance of a body produces a shadow. So that our Mashiach only does what the father does and only says what he hears and you can see that picture again you go all the way back to the beginning everything that he does reflects the truth including the creation as a parable of history through creation and his works because it's a reflection of the truth and he can't be inconsistent with himself so obviously these things start making more sense as we go along but we'll continue real quick it says and when he has prayed for these things let the rest of the the overseers add Amen, and together with them all the people. And after the, the prayer, let one of the overseers elevate. Now this part right here, there is no inequality amongst people. And this is something that is not, not mentioned anywhere else. It's what you'd call an aberrant, an aberrant text with one witness to itself. Because we have all over the place that he who wants to be leader of all should be servant of all not elevated and put over over all the people but uh and then it talks about how he puts on a flowing gown and he does some other things right uh there there's some things in that isn't true but i want to read through this just so you can see the idea of what an assembly is usually doing okay this is an after the prayer, let one of the overseers elevate the, sacrif the sacrifice upon the hands of him that is ordained, and early in the morning let him be enthroned in a place set apart for him among the rest of the overseers. And this is nothing, none of that is ever mentioned to other places, all right? They all giving thanks, or giving him the kiss in Yahuwah. And after the reading, this is the important part, okay? And after the reading of the, the law and the foretellers and our epistles and acts and the good news, let him that is ordained salute the assembly, saying the favor of our Yahuwah, Yahushua, Mashiach, the love of our Elohim and Father, and the fellowship of his Kodesh Ruach be with you all. And let them all answer, and with your Ruach, or and with your soul, right? Because the, the spirit is the ruach. The nefesh is the inner being. There's two different things. You want his ruach to be with your nefesh. And after the salutation, let him speak to the people the words of exhortation. So you have reading of the scriptures, exhortation, right? And when he has ended his instructive discourse, I, Andrew, the brother of Kepha, or Andari, right, the brother of Kepha, say that while all having risen are standing up, let the minister ascend to some high place and proclaim, let none of the hearers, let none of the unbelievers stay. And silence being made, let him say. So you see, <clears throat> let none of the hearers and let none of the unbelievers stay. That means those that are not yet immersed in his name. Okay, and now this is a prayer that I actually say every morning because I still consider myself in this position of instructed until I'm properly immersed in his name. And everyone who's in the position of a catch human or an instructed, a taught one, if you will, if you die in belief, meaning if you die loving your neighbor, being kind, speaking the truth, not not doing evil to others, but returning good for evil. If you die in that, that's a more pure immersion than being immersed in water by man. And you will be delivered for your maker. You can be assured of that. It's actually written. 
So even if we're not yet perfect in him, we, we don't have anyone to properly immerse us because you can't just willy-nilly do it how you want. Tragically, a lot do, but that's not what it says. You, you have to be taught properly first, and there are certain things you have to do. If you don't renounce the adversary or get immersed by someone who truly loves Yahuwah, it's not effectual. You're not getting his Ruach put on you when they anoint you or lay hands on you. This is you instructed, pray, and let all the trustworthy pray for us in their minds, saying, Yahuwah, have chesed, or mercy, upon us. And let the minister bid prayers for us, saying, Let us in all implore our Elohim for the instructed, that he that is good, he that is the lover of mankind, may mercifully hear our prayers and supplications, and so accept our petitions as to assist us and give us those desires of our hearts which are for our advantage. And reveal, sorry, I'll read it properly. I, like I said, I say this every morning. I'm sorry. And reveal to us the good news of his Mashiach. Give them light and comprehension. Instruct them in the knowledge of El. Teach them his commands and his ordinances. Implant in them his pure and delivering fear, or his delivering and set-apart fear, right? Open the ears of their hearts that they may exercise themselves in his Torah day and night. Strengthen them in piety. Unite them to and number them with his flock, deeming them worthy of the laver of regeneration and the garment of incorruption, which is the true life and deliver them from all unrighteousness, and give no place to the adversary against them, but cleanse them from all filthiness of flesh and ruach, and dwell in them, and walk in them by his Mashiach. Barak their comings in and their going out, and order their affairs for their good. Let us still earnestly supplicate for them, that they, obtaining by their initiation the forgiveness of their transgressions, may be esteemed worthy of the set-apart mysteries and of continuance with the set-apart ones. Rise up, you instructed. Pray you that you may be, or that you may have the shalom of El through Mashiach, a shalom-filled day and without sin, and that such may be the whole time of your life. Pray that yours may be a Natsari death. Seek a compassionate and merciful Elohim and the forgiveness of your transgressions. Dedicate yourselves to the only unbegotten El through his Mashiach. Bow down your heads and receive the Barakah. But upon the mention of each of these particulars, which the minister utters in bidding to pray, as we said before, so when he calls out the names of each one, right? Let the people say, Yahuwah have mercy, and let the children say it first. And as the instructed have bowed down their heads, let the overseer who's newly ordained barak them with this blessing. El Shaddai, unbegotten and inaccessible, who only, or who only are the true El. The El and Father of your Mashiach, your only begotten Son. The El of the Comforter and Yahuwah of the Creation, or Master of the Creation, who by Mashiach did appoint the taught ones to be teachers that men might learn piety. Do you yourself even now look down upon your servants who are instructed in the good news of your Mashiach? and give them a new heart and renew a right ruach in their inward parts, that they may both know and do your will with full purpose of heart and with a willing inner being. Account them worthy of the set-apart initiation, and unite them to your set-apart assembly, and make them partakers of your set-apart mysteries through Mashiach our expectation, who for them suffered death, through whom esteem and worship be given to you, in the Kodesh Ruach forever. Amen. And after this, let the minister say, Go out, you instructed in Shalom. Yeah.
And it says, and after they are gone out, let him say, you energonums, or you energumens, right? These are the ones that are afflicted by demons, right? Afflicted with unclean spirits, or ruachoth, pray, and let us all earnestly pray for them, that Elohim, the lover of mankind, may by Mashiach rebuke the unclean and wicked spirits, and deliver his supplicants from the dominion of the adversary. He that rebuked the legion of demons and the prince of wickedness, the devil, may he himself even now rebuke these apostates from piety and deliver his own workmanship from their power and cleanse those whom he has made with much chokmah. Let us still pray earnestly for them. Deliver them, Elohim, and raise them up by your power. Bow down your heads, you afflicted, and receive the baraka. And let the overseer add a prayer, saying, You who have bound the strong man and spoiled all that was in his house, who has given us power over serpents and scorpions to tread upon them and upon all the power of the enemy, who has delivered the serpent, the murderer of men bound to us as a, as a parent to children, you whom all things dread, trembling before the face of your power, who has cast him down as lightning from Shemaim to earth, not with a fall from a place, but from honor to dishonor, on account of his voluntary evil disposition, whose look dried the abysses, and whose threatening melted the mountains, and whose truth remains forever, whom the babes praise, and or whom the infants praise, and the suckling babes, whom messengers sing hymns to and adore, who looks upon the earth and makes it tremble, who touches the mountains and they smoke, who threatens the sea and dries it up and makes all its rivers as a desert, and whose clouds are the dust of your feet, who walks upon the sea as upon firm ground, you only begotten El, the son of the great father, Rebuke these wicked spirits and deliver the works of your hands from the power of the adverse Ruach. For to you belong esteem, honor, and worship, and through you to your Father, in the Kodesh Ruach forever. Amen. And let the minister say, Go out, you afflicted, or energumens, <clears throat> and after they have gone out, let him cry aloud, you that are about to be enlightened, pray and let us all, or and let you or who are about to be, right, immersed, they call it illuminated here, pray and let all of us, the trustworthy, earnestly pray for them that Yahuwah may deem them worthy after being initiated into the death of Mashiach to rise with him and become partakers of his kingdom and communicants of his mysteries. May unite them to and number them with, or among those that are delivered in his Kodesh assembly. Deliver them and raise them up in your favor. Having sealed themselves to Elohim through his Mashiach, and having bowed down their heads, let them receive the Baraka from the overseer. You who have formally said by your foretellers to those that were to be initiated, wash you, become clean, and have through Mashiach appointed the spiritual regeneration, do you yourself even now look down upon these that are about to be immersed and barack them and set them apart and prepare them that they may become worthy of your Ruachni gifts or gift, your spiritual gift? and of the true adoption of your Ruachni mysteries of being gathered together with those that are delivered through Mashiach, our Deliverer, through whom esteem, honor, and worship be to you in the Kodesh Ruach forever. Amen. If you see the pattern, esteem, honor, worship be to the Father through our Mashiach, in 
the most Kodesh Ruach because you have to be in his Ruach to be pleasing to him. And let the minister say, go out, you that are about to be immersed or baptized, as they say. And after this, let him proclaim, you penitents, pray. And let us all earnestly pray for our brethren in the state of penance, that Elohim, the lover of compassion, may show to them the way of repentance and accept their return and their confession and bruise Satan under their heel or feet shortly and redeem them from the snare of the devil and the ill usage of the demons and free them from every unlawful word and every absurd practice and wicked thought. Forgive them all their offenses, both voluntary and involuntary, and blot out the handwriting which is against them, and write them in the book of life. Cleanse them from all filthiness of flesh and ruach, and restore and unite them to his set-apart flock. For he knows our frame. For who can say that he has a clean heart? And who can boldly say that he is pure from sin? For we are all under penalties. Let us still pray for them more earnestly. For there is joy in Shemaim over one sinner that repents. That being converted from every evil work, they may be joined to all good practice. That Elohim, the lover of mankind, may soon accept their supplications propitiously. Restore to them the joy of his deliverance and strengthen them with his free ruach, that they may not be any more shaken, but be admitted to the communion of his most kadosh things, and become partakers of the elbreathed mysteries, that appearing worthy of his adoption, they may obtain eternal life. Let us still, or let us all still earnestly say on their account, Yahuwah, have mercy. Deliver them, Elohim, and raise them up by your mercy. And when you have risen up, bow your heads to Elohim through his Mashiach and receive the Baraka. And you see, this is all written. So they're doing this through his Mashiach, who is the word. They're doing this according to his desire, and they're asking in belief. This is the power of being in the assembly and doing things accordingly. You can know for certain, right? Let the overseer then add this prayer. <clears throat> Almighty Eternal El, Yahuwah of the creation, the creator and governor of all things, who has exhibited man as the ornament of the world through Mashiach and did give him a law both naturally implanted and written, that he might live according to law as a rational creature. And when he had sinned, you gave him your goodness as a pledge in order to his repentance. Look upon these persons who have bowed the neck of their inner being and body to you, you desire not the death of a sinner, but his repentance, that he turn from his wicked way and live. You who did accept the repentance of the Ninevites, who wills that all men be delivered and come to the acknowledgement of the truth, who did accept of that son who had consumed his substance in riotous living with the bowels of a father on account of his repentance. Do you yourself also now accept of the repentance of your supplicants, because there is no man that sins not? For if you, Yahuwah, mark inequities, Yahuwah who shall stand, because with you there is propitiation. And do you restore them to your set-apart assembly, into their former dignity and honor, through Mashiach, our Elohim and Deliverer, through whom esteem and adoration be to you in the Kodesh Ruach forever. Amen. And let the minister say, Depart you, penitents.
And let him add, let no one of those who have not a right draw near. All we of the trustworthy, let us bow the knee. Let us entreat Elohim through his Mashiach. Let us all earnestly beseech Elohim through his Mashiach. Okay, so now you had the prayers. First, they had the exhortations. They read the, the good news. They, they gave the accounts. They had the readers and ministers and everyone, the singers. Everyone did their part. And now they're doing the break up, the prayers and, and breaking away for everybody who isn't just of the trustworthy. And now all they have left is that righteous remnant in the group. Everyone else is gone. And then this is what they pray. It's only these ones that are vouchsafed eternal life, by the way. And they know it. This is why they do it according to this pattern. Okay. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to be having eternal life if you're an instructed. If you die in belief, you're, that's your immersion. But you're not guaranteed. You have to actually die in belief to do that. Okay. This is how you can be guaranteed eternal life. Let us pray for the shalom and welfare of the world and of the set-apart assemblies that the L of the creation may afford us his everlasting shalom and such as may not be taken away from us, that he may preserve us in a full persecution of such virtue as is according to righteousness. Let us pray for the Kodesh Yachad and Apostolic Assembly. They put Catholic here because it was, it mentions in 2nd Baruch that the truth was hidden in the fourth beast. The fourth beast of the visions of Daniel and the, from the book of Revelation, it's unequivocally known that the first beast, the head of gold, was Babylon. And then what came after was the Medo-Persians, okay? What came after was the Grecian Empire, and what came after was Rome. These things are unequivocally known in antiquity, mentioned throughout the writings, both known and hidden of Scripture, that Rome was going to be the partaker of that fourth beast. There's very heavy condemnations for mystery Babylon, the daughter of Babel, Edom, all of these are different allusions to this apostate assembly that was born in the womb, but rose up against him. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, the truth was hidden in them. So they had these writings and they destroyed any other copies of them. The only versions that we have come from this perverted source. And if we want to know what they did with the truth, when he was handed over to them by the Yahudim, they dressed him up like a king, mocked him in worship and flayed, flagged him and, and murdered him. That's what they did with the truth. And that's what you can see reflected in the words that we still have today. So anytime you find error, you can directly point it to that source of what happened. He was made unrecognizable as a man. The truth was mutilated for our sake. And it's reflected in the word. This is, let us pray for the Kodesh Yachad and Apostolic Assembly, which is spread from one end of the earth to the other, that Yahuwah may preserve and keep it unshaken and free from the waves of this life until the end of the world, as founded upon a rock. And that's the truth of Elohim, is the rock upon which we, we tread, right? And let us pray for this set-apart parish, that Yahuwah of the creation may deem us worthy, without failure, to follow after the Shemaim expectation, and without ceasing, to pay him the debt of our prayer. Let us pray every assembly, which is under the whole Shemaim, of those that rightly divide the word of your truth, let us pray for our overseer, Yaakov, and his assemblies. Let us pray for our overseer, Clement, and his assemblies. Let us pray for our overseer, Eodius, and his assemblies. Eodius was the first overseer of Antioch. 
after he was martyred, they put Ignatius was initiated by either Kepha or Shaul. And Ignatius was the one who in 107 was taken from there to Rome to be fed by wild beasts. And he wrote a whole bunch of correspondence back and forth. He had people coming to him, envoys from the different assemblies would bring succor. They tried to bribe the guards not to be as harsh with him as they were, not to release him, but to treat him kindly. And they, they, they came uh, being kind to those who are in prison. These are the very things that were instructed in the apostolic constitutions that you can see actually happening in his letters. And if you read the longer versions, they're very amazing. Most of them are very profitable, but these were also heavily tampered with after he was martyred. There's shorter versions and there's a whole bunch of other writings that have nothing to do with it that are quite perverted that helped push the Nicolaitan doctrines in Antioch at that time. And if you if you're paying attention to those videos or studying history, you know that it was only eight years after he was taken that that city was destroyed for what they were doing. But this is, let us pray for our overseer, Hanan Yahu, and his parishes, that the compassionate El may grant them to continue in his set-apart assemblies in health, honor, and long life and afford them an honorable old age in righteousness or in piety and righteousness. And let us pray for our elders that Yahuwah may deliver them from every unreasonable and wicked action and afford them a eldership in health and honor. Let us pray for all the ministers and subordinate servants of the assembly that Yahuwah may grant them an unblameable reputation. Let us pray for the readers, singers, virgins, widows, and orphans. Let us pray for those that are in marriage and childbearing, that Yahuwah may have mercy upon them all, or chesed, that word is unmerited tender loving kindness, right? Let us pray for the eunuchs leading a life of set-apartness, let us pray for those persons that are in a state of contingency and religious abstinence. Let us pray for those that bear fruit in the set-apart assembly and give alms to the needy. And let us pray for those who offer offerings or sacrifices and oblations to Yahuwah our Elohim. That Elohim, the fountain of all goodness, may recompense them with his Shamayim gifts and give them in this world a hundredfold, and in the world to come life everlasting, and bestow upon them for their temporal things, those that are eternal, for earthly things, those that are Shemaim. Let us pray for our brethren newly enlightened, that Yahuwah may strengthen and confirm them, let us pray for our brethren afflicted with sickness and or that Yahuwah may deliver them from every disease and every malady and restore them sound to his set-apart assembly. You see, they associate being sick with being out of his favor, right? Uh, Let us pray for those that travel by water or by land. Let us pray for those that are in the mines, in banishment, in prisons, and in bonds, for the name of Yahuwah. Let us pray for those that are worn down with toil in bitter servitude. Let us pray for our enemies that those that are and those that hate us. Let us pray for those that persecute us for the name of Yahuwah, that Yahuwah may, be, may pacify their anger and cause their wrath against us to pass away. Let us pray for those that are without and have wandered out of the way, that Yahuwah may convert them. Let us be mindful of the young ones of the assembly or infants of the assembly, that Yahuwah may perfect them in his fear and bring them to a complete age. 
Let us pray for one another, that Yahuwah may keep us by his favor to the end, and deliver us from the evil one and from all the scandals of those that, that work inequity, and preserve us into his Shemaim kingdom. Let us pray forever, or for every Natsari soul. Deliver us and raise us up, Elohim, by your loving kindness. Let us rise up, and let us pray earnestly, and dedicate ourselves and one another to the living El through his Mashiach. Moreover, let the overseer offer a prayer and say, <clears throat> El Shaddai, or Yahuwah Almighty, the Most High who dwells on high, the set-apart one that rests among the Kodeshim without beginning, the only king who has given to us through Mashiach the preaching of knowledge to the acknowledgement of your esteem and of your name, which he has made known to us for our comprehension. Do you yourself even now look down through him upon this your flock and deliver it from all ignorance and wicked practices and grant that we may fear you in earnest and love you with affection and have a due reverence of your esteem. Be favorable and merciful to them and hearken to them when they pray unto you and keep them that they may be unmovable, blameless, and irreproachable, that they may be set apart in body and inner being, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that they may be complete, and no one among them may be defective or imperfect. You powerful defender, who does not accept persons, be you the assister of this your people which you have redeemed with the precious blood of your Mashiach. Be you their protector, helper, provider, and guardian, their strong wall of defense, their bulwark and security, because none can snatch out of your hand. For there is no other L like you, because on you is our reliance. Set apart them through your truth, for your word is truth. You who do nothing for favor, you whom none can deceive, deliver them from every disease and every malady, and every offense, every injury and deceit, from fear of the enemy, from the dart that flies in the day, from the mischief that walks about in darkness, and account them worthy of that everlasting life which is in Mashiach, your only begotten Son. Our El and Deliverer, through whom esteem and worship be to you, in the Kodesh Ruach, now and always, and forever. Amen. And it goes on to say, and after this, let the minister say, let us attend. And what? let, oh, just one moment. All right. And while there's still a little bit to go here about what they do when they assemble and pray and everything, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up and finish this probably next week. So thank you all for your time. Ob willing, this is edifying for everyone, and we can go over it again uh, and have these as platforms, or these are, these are uh, examples of prayers for believers, and definitely the things that we ought to eventually start doing once we get in a body politic properly so thank you all for your time y'all who will be with you and you have a wonderful shabbat and shavuotov week ahead <laughs>